What's happening guys? Ari here from Boston Automotive Consulting and today I wanted to talk about the 1% rule in leasing and why it's so effective in trying to get an understanding or an estimate of what a lease payment would be on the fly so you don't have to actually calculate anything and have a sense for what it's going to lease out for without actually having to do out the math. As always, this video is brought to you by SaveOnMyAuto.com. SaveOnMyAuto.com is a resource you can use so that you can shop around for the best possible deal. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing because this whole channel is dedicated to giving you everything you're gonna need to know so that you can negotiate your best possible deal. Now, the 1% rule, how it's understood among the gurus, if you will, all the online forums, some of the videos you might be seeing on YouTube, is that they take the MSRP of the car. Usually you'll find the MSRP on the window sticker. This is the full price of the car. They'll take 1% of that. So in essence, $50,000 being my MSRP, I would have 500 as being 1%. The rule is, and it's not clearly defined when talked about online, 1% of that being 500 should be your lease payment. However, I have a slight adaptation as to how I take the 1% rule and make it work and make it work about, I'd say 80% of the time. How I usually do this, I usually take 1% of the MSRP and 5% as the amount that I'm gonna be putting do it start. So covering all my fees, taxes, acquisition, registration, all that stuff. So if I've got 50,000, 5% of that, in essence, 2,500 is going to be what I'm going to be putting do it start. Usually I'll do it at 10,000 miles a year at 36 months. The concept behind this is guys, is that it's an estimate. It's not a set rule. If I tell you 1% of MSRP should be your payment, if you land at, you know, a few bucks over, 20 bucks over, but you're really, really close, the estimate did you pretty well in trying to give you some sort of idea or some sort of sense as to what it's going to be leasing out for. However, the reason why it's not always effective, as in the 20% of the time that it's not effective is sometimes there are cars that don't lease out well. And in those cases, you're probably not getting a good lease deal on those cars. So take for instance, a good lease deal, a Honda Civic, it's about $22,000, $23,000. $230 a month with $1,250 do it start is a pretty fantastic deal. But then you've got cars such as say, a $37,000 Kia Telluride leasing for way more than 1% because there's factors that are making it impossible to lease at 1%. And these are the types of cars that don't lease out well, hence they wouldn't fall into that 1% rule category. The reason why this 1% rule is so, so important is it's not that it's supposed to give you an accurate lease estimate. It's supposed to give you a gauge as to is this lease deal a good lease deal and what you should be targeting as a baseline lease deal. So if you can get the Kia Telluride for 1% and 5% do it start, then you're getting a good deal. Now, if you wanna drill this down even further, I've got a course in the description as to how you can find actual rates and residuals, money factors, things that you can calculate your own lease deal and see if you can get below 1% or find out if you're gonna be above 1%. In essence, do the research after you've gauged, would this be hypothetically a good lease deal at 1% a month and 5% do it start. So guys, I hope that this information helped you out in trying to figure out quickly how much a car would lease out for. Like I said before, the 1% rule doesn't work every time, but when it does and you get even below that, then you're getting a good lease deal. If you found this information useful and you wanna see more of these new car buying and negotiation tip type videos, please consider subscribing. And don't forget to visit saveonmyauto.com as well as the resources down in the description below. Thank you so, so much for watching guys. We'll see you next time.